Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us. This is our first episode of Drink Up, Burn Down. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about our favorite everyday scotches, our favorite everyday cigars. That's a really fun conversation we have for you today. Um, and then we're also filtering you know, some fun conversation about a golf trip. We were just out there a couple weeks ago playing golf together, uh, drinking scotch, smoking cigars. So a lot of fun we have for you today. We have an amazing lineup. We have here McAllen 12, my favorite Oban 14, and we also have Lagavulin 16. Chad, what are you drinking right now? What is your everyday go-to scotch? Yeah, so this right here is that McAllen 12 you mentioned, right? So we did 12, 14, 16. It's interesting that it plays so well for us today, but this is McAllen 12. Uh, the reason it's my favorite everyday scotch, right? Not my favorite bottle of scotch I've ever had, but the favorite everyday is a little bit of combination between your price for value, right? Depending where you buy it, you can get this for anywhere from 50 to 70 bu you know, bucks plus or minus. It's the double barrel McAllen 12, so not the single barrel. They now have a new triple barrel, which is crazy to think about. But honestly, the, the flavor profile is fantastic. It's not too peaty, which means it doesn't stay in my breath all night, right? So I don't get in that much trouble at home for having a scotch breath the entire night. So awesome. McCown 12, one of the best pieces for the price. And what are you pairing that with? I see a cigar there. I like it. So this is you know, the 1990 vintage uh, Rocky Patel. This is a nice. little short piece, box cut. So fantastic little scotch or a little cigar. It'll flow nice and smooth all the way through the end. Um, and at the end of the day, I'll end up dropping and introducing another little one a little bit later in the episode. That is awesome. Great pairing, by the way. My favorite go-to is Oban 14. I think it's the smoothest scotch I ever drank. And quite frankly, the first time I've been introduced to this was back maybe seven years ago by a friend of mine. And I'll tell you, it changed my entire perspective about scotch and uh, gave me a passion to learn more about it. So. This is now my go-to. It runs about anywhere from 60 to about $95 a bottle, depending on where you're getting it. And um, the other thing that I have here is my favorite go-to cigar, which is the Padron 1964 Anniversary. And I will be sharing with you all what, why this is my favorite from start to finish. I can't wait to cut this thing open. All right, so I chose the oldest of these different scotches here today. Uh, it's the Lagavulin 16 year. It's an island scotch. It shows it's actually from an island just to the southwest, I believe it is, of Scotland. Um, and I love it for the peatiness. So unlike <laughs> Chad, who doesn't like that on the breath, I don't mind brushing my teeth afterwards if I need to, because it is just such a fantastic and wonderful flavor profile. It's this beautiful amber color. And when you drink it, it's just, you got that peatiness, and you've got this fruitiness with it. It's just a great pairing. Um, if you haven't had peatiness or haven't really experienced that yet, it's the bottle to kind of start with that. That's kind of how I fell into it. Um, for me, I do think it is an instant classic. Um, definitely recommend try it out. The bottle, I believe, is about 60 to $80, yep. kind of in the same price range as the other ones. Yep. Um, you know, I do really enjoy the McAllen and the Oban as well. You really can't go wrong with any of these. But for my money, it's going to be on Lagavulin. So go to, don't get that wrong. I love a Lagavulin 12, this, or the 16. And the peatiness is fantastic. I'm a huge fan of that smoky flavor. It's more so that my better half is not so much a fan of that, <laughs> that, that flavor. True. Right? Yeah. So, you know, McAllen and Oban are almost no peatiness at all, like, if any. Right? The Lagavulin, also, if you ever haven't tried a Laphroaig 10, is also fantastic if you like the peatiness. Mm -hmm. Uh, but at the end of the day, that peaty flavor sits under your tongue for hours and brushing your teeth may or may not work, uh, depending on how sensitive your better half might be. And, and the, in my opinion, I think the peatiness of the scotch makes it, the pairing is a little bit more interesting. Uh, for my money, I like the My Father number five. I think it goes very well with it. They complement each other very well. So it helps cut out that peatiness a little bit. It gives it a little bit nice balance profile. Yep. I would have to agree with you. Uh, typically, when I smoke a more full flavor cigar, I like a little bit more peatiness because it complements it very well. It does. I mean, it, the taste between Lagavulin and Oban is, I mean, complete night and day. And um, I, I, I do agree with what you said about not really minding of, you know, getting, you know, the taste out. It's not that difficult. By the way, one of the episodes we will talk about how to get the smell out of your breath, off your breath, I should say, um, very, very effectively at both cigars and scotch. So, so that, gents, I've been jonesing to light this thing. So I've already clipped mine. I kind of rushed to it. 
When are you guys going to clip those cigars? When can we light them? Yeah, so we do have a couple of different cutting apparatuses here. We have the very fancy, the cigar, scissor guillotine. It's got three blades on it, and I think, Paul, you should... I, I, I'm more of a V-cut guy. Are you myself. a V-cut guy? Okay. I'm a V-cut, so it's, it's like the guillotine. It's just nice and easy. And so here we go. Gotcha. I am going to use a double blade guillotine. Yeah, with that, it's a little, maybe a little hard to see there, but you can see it doesn't cut off the whole end like the guillotine does. It just kind of cuts it right down the middle. Makes a nice, smooth, even smoke. What I like to do with my cigar is after I cut it. Be careful with your torches. Okay. Right on camera. Check oh, that out. My God. Let's Are you go. okay? Yeah, we're good. All right. What I like to do after I cut my cigar is I like to blow out from the, the side that you light just to get all the the particles so you're not having to spit it out from your from your tongue. And it does keep it from getting all the debris in your mouth. So before the pre-light with you guys, do you guys ever take the dry draw or are you guys just right into it? I get right into it. Yep, same. See me, I like to take a few pre-draws, gives it a nice interesting kind of flavors. Because it's interesting between the pre-light and then after the light, sometimes you can get different flavors, so another thing I like to do. Yep. Chad, how much does a stick of Rocky Patel that you're smoking cost? This one, for at least the short, it's only about 10, 12 bucks. Um, you can also get a longer fill. These things will go all the way up to 16 to 18 bucks, depending on the cigar, the type of cut, etc. Um, this was a torpedo though, and only about a five inch stick. So you're a little bit cheaper from the cigar smoke. So that's why I say it's a really good everyday cigar, right? I'm not trying to smoke a 20, 30, $40 cigar every single day when you're just taking that, that you know, 30 to 45 minutes out to hit a cigar for a little bit. That's a good point. I'm smoking a Padron 1964 anniversary, and these are a little bit on the expensive side. They run about $22 a stick. The only way I can afford it is if I buy it from a box perspective, and which reduces the cost down to about $13 a stick. It's so nice It's a very, very nice yeah, savings. Where are you buying this one? I buy it from Thompson's Cigar, yeah. and I also have Cigar International um, membership there as well. So. I mean, I get them where they have the best deal. Sometimes you can, you know, subscribe to their their uh, their email campaigns, and they'll give you like a twenty percent off. Is you know probably the best time to sneak in a sale. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, that's actually not a good thing, man. So they're not sponsoring this episode, but a call out for Thompson Cigars. Regularly, if you've never purchased from them, they offer a pretty sweet deal where you can get like ten to twelve cigars in a humidor for like 30 bucks. And now they're not going to be great cigars. They're going to be like a Vincent Sinclair, right? That's only okay on the lower end. But at the end of the day, to get a humidor that'll fill like 10 to 20 cigars for only 30 bucks and a couple entry level cigars, not a bad deal at all. I'm using one of those humidors for my daily right now. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's a sweet deal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I do want to... Myself, I'm smoking the, my father's cigar. Uh, this cigar right here is actually kind of sentimental to me. Because I've been smoking for over 20 years, but this was the cigar uh, when this came out. It kind of brought me back in and got me. It was so good that I started smoking almost every day at that point again. So this was the cigar that kind of drew me back in. Despite Don Pepin Garcia, uh, it's called My Father. It's an O2 Pepin Garcia because he had started the brand with his son and with his daughter. And Don Pepin is actually from Cuba. Has a, had a factory in Miami. Now has a factory in Nicaragua. And he's such a good cigar maker, he actually makes cigars for other brands, like El Tatuaje and um, La Roma de Cuba. He actually makes all their cigars as well, or most of the cigars. I love those brands as well. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I am astonished on is the fact that Cuba has been always the, the, the king of the hill when it comes to cigars. People know that. It's no secret. But... Other countries outside of Cuba and Dominican Republic, I mean, Nicaragua, you have um, Honduras cigars. I mean, they are coming up on their status and, you know, um, their manufacturing abilities. We've already talked about doing a, a uh, comparison over time, right? Cubans versus Dominicans. I think Steve already has a good idea about what about some Nicaraguans where you have a lot of Cuban makers that are moving to Nicaragua now, too where it's just cheaper to source. So we have a lot of fun things over the coming episodes to talk about 
Um, you know, the other thing, like we mentioned in the intro, right? Leave us comments, subscribe. Let us know things you want us to talk about. That's kind of the point and purpose of what we're doing today is to solicit your feedback. We'll bring on guests over time too yeah, I mean, and just have a conversation. This is a conversation and join that conversation. Comment in the section below. We'll be happy to mention your comments in a future episode or even comment ourselves to your comments. So keep that conversation going after this video is done. Yeah, say so if you don't want your comment to be featured in an episode, don't leave it because you never know what we're going to say. We might give a shout out. You might see your name drop. So definitely keep it inter interactive. Keep us engaged and let's have a conversation. Yeah, definitely. Your comments will make um, our episode a little bit more relevant to our viewers, mainly because a lot of the comments that you suggest hopefully will also have products that we should be showcasing in our future episodes. Um, I know that I have a lot more that uh, that I want to share in terms of um, you know the various different whiskeys and whatnot but I mean there are a lot out there that I haven't tried myself that I'm very very interested in so please be a part of it even if you don't like our sunglasses or our stupid shirts let us know let's have some fun yeah, you send us are, some shirts and we'll wear it yeah. you guys are both wearing sunglasses <laughs> I feel like I should put mine on too it's such a beautiful day here in California it is yeah you guys want to roll that clip of our golf outing? Oh, that was so f much fun. It was a fantastic time. I hadn't golfed in three or four years, got some small kids, work on the way, life on the way. It was such a great time to get back and get back with these guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the clip. I know I certainly did enjoy that golf outing. Okay, guys, so before we kick it, because it's going to start off with a dice game, right? And then we're going to go to the outcome from that dice game. So, Steve, can you explain what that dice game was and what it was for you? So this, so this dice game is, um, uh, was on, I think, hole number 16, and it was a par 5, and uh, for $20, we got to have a shot of rolling this dice, and as long as it landed on a 5 or a 6, uh, we were able to get the maximum yardage where we officially teed off from. So, okay, like um, an extra 300 yards. An extra 300 yards. That's the maximum. And so uh, our objective was to get 5 or 6. So with that, let's let it roll. Dice game, Steve's rolling, ready? We're trying to buy ourselves a bunch of yardage. So a five or a six? Cigar right here, delicious. Just loop this one up. Paul just lit his up. We're now chatting around. Here, Paul Horn, Steve Kwan. These come in a nice tin tube, as you can see. I haven't lit mine. These two have. Ooh. We got a, oh, this is nice. Got a V cut. Got a guillotine cut. Yeah, delicious. All right, guys. So we're here on hole number 18, and we are eight under. We have three more holes to go, actually four more holes, counting this one, we off four. Yep. and we are just definitely kicking ass. We're here with Paul, and he's got something in his hand. What is that? Monic Club, seven year Adejo. Fantastic, good, cheap, everyday sort of rum. Great to make, so drink straight up. Can I ask how much that bottle costs? It's about 15, 18 bucks. That's it? That's it. All right, get it out of the show. Guys, we need something above, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wait, Kevin, introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Kevin. Uh, I was, I'm a guest of theirs. Uh, joined this tournament. Um, He's the ringer. This, this, this the course ringer. is awesome. Having a, having a great time. Without guy, him, we suck. We, we have an eagle because this guy <laughs> took his three and put it on the green on a par five. Money shot. 245 yards out and, into the wind. And then we got another eagle because Steve hit two awesome shots a, a into 12 feet. Guys, a guys, seven out of the bunker. I appreciate all the, all the hype and all that, but guys... <laughs> Realistically, today was a complete team effort, and I couldn't be yeah, prouder of... Ham and an egg, man. Ham absolutely. Egg. Absolutely. All right, gents. Salute. Oops. Oh, chopped liver? <laughs> I guess we're next up. <laughs> Tasty. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, that is smooth. Actually. It's really smooth. Ooh, okay. $15 bottle, smooth. No kidding, and I'm not just saying this, but it's really, really sweet, and yeah. it has like a grape 
taste to it. It like does. It actually yeah. does. Slight little grape. It almost reminds me of like a hint of the Welch's grape juice a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> that is really good. Yeah, it, it, what's good. crazy about this is this is actually made in Cuba, but us being here in the U.S. can't get the real thing, so they have to barrel it and uh, finish it in Puerto Rico. Hmm. But the Cuban one is actually even sweeter. Yeah. Oh. It's it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Good shit. Yeah, that was smooth. awesome. So nice. probably even better. Steve did that dice roll that you saw. That got us on this hole 496 <laughs> yards. It bought us 300 yards. So we're now shooting 196 out on a par four. Par five. Par five. This is par, par five. five. Yeah. Par and, five. And we're lying zero. And we lie zero. 196, 196 out. out. Like we're trying to go for what are we calling this? Albatross. albatross. An albatross, man. Like a double eagle. If we can do okay. Wish us luck. So we're gonna let this roll. And we're just gonna film it. Although there's some guys up here. Like, taking their taking time. Their time. They're not taking too good. Time. Slow rolling the whole day. Like, what are you gonna do, man? It is what it is. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right. Oh, all nice right. bounce. There it is. Oh. Bunker. Green side bunker. All right. All right. Go for it. Paul. That wasn't it. No, that was not it. That's how it's not done, folks. Just showing you how it's not done. <laughs> now Steve will show us how it's done. Oh, it is yeah. all over it. All over it. Oh. <laughs> there it is. Dude. Love it. Guys, guys, oh. hey guys, two putt for an eagle right here. Two putt for an eagle. So as you just saw, that was a perfect roll. I mean, you couldn't have planned it any better. So we had that extra 300 yards, which we, we ended, ended up, up an eagle. eagle. Yeah. Fantastic. Which, by the way, okay, I mean, you can't see the ball, where it landed, or anything like that. Paul actually shot a really nice safety shot. When you play four-man best ball, you want somebody that you can rely on to at least hit a safety shot so some of us can go for it. Well, that's exactly what Paul did to set that up for us. So you heard us make fun of him. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. But the reality of it is from where we were, only less than 200 yards out, right? that poor shot set us up to no matter what, we were going to have a birdie opportunity anyways. right? It actually was a decent shot. But from 200 yards out... We were trying to be on the green. We wanted that albatross, right? We didn't end up getting it, but we still got an eagle. So. Great job, I mean, to get an eagle. I think that was our third eagle in a row on par fives. That was. Yep. That's amazing. I'll tell you, that's that was one of my most enjoyable days uh, this year. It was a blast. Absolutely. Yeah, it is, man. Like, it's a day on the golf course, right? Some, one of the things I love about golf, guys, is just having drinks and having a couple cigars, just talking. Right, like it's almost every single round, no matter what. It's another thirty to sixty minutes afterwards, Isn't where we tally up scores and talk, and just have a good conversation again. I mean, there's not the whole idea here. I mean, the cigars, the drinks, the golf, all of it has the same common theme, which is great conversations. Yep. You can't have golf without drinks, and you can't have golf without cigars. And I'll tell you, it, it's very difficult. At least, it's more enjoyable when you have these two in your hands. But also among well, very very these two, right? yeah those two as well <laughs> these two instead you guys, didn't you, know, you didn't you didn't let me one. finish I was gonna say <laughs> and with the right company of course so I mean it's not to put it out there right? like not everybody has a cigar or scotch while they play golf right like you don't see the professionals out there smoking cigars but at the end of the day we're common everyday people right yeah. like that's something we love like I'm not trying to be in the PGA I love golf because it's one of the most humbling sports that I've ever played and for every awesome shot you have I have another just chunk that goes like ten yards and. I'm like starting over, right? So for us, it's a different level of experience. I think you bring up a good point. You know, John Daly is very, very well liked <laughs> because the association with people and his drinking and his smoking on the golf course. And although it's a little bit, you know, viewed as taboo among professional golfers, I think John Daly is genuinely liked by people because 
we can associate with him on the things that he likes to do on the golf course that yep. really, you know, we can relate to. Yep. I mean, if you ever want to see a golf experience and do that, check out the Phoenix Open. The Waste <laughs> Management Open. It's basically happy. You mean the wasted? Golf. It is so fun to it, be at and watch. Yeah, and actually being there is just an It is. Unreal. Like, if you want to watch real golf, you want to go on, like, Sunday or Monday, don't show up on Friday or Saturday. Friday or Saturday is a complete mess uh, we, of, like, beer garden and wine garden and concerts. My, and Yeah, my buddy was there last year and has three separate videos with three separate streakers. So yes. that's the sort it's of uh, atmosphere it is for that tournament. Yep. That's so awesome. I got to tell you guys, I am thoroughly enjoying the cigar. Uh, I'm about a quarter way into the cigar. It's burning very, very evenly, as you guys can see. But also, this pairing, I mean, I don't know. If, if I had my last meal on Earth and <laughs> I had to incorporate something that um, was not considered a meal, this would definitely be it right here. What do you mean booze ain't food? Okay. <laughs> Scratch that. My bad. <laughs> I can correct you guys. Like my Rocket Patel is burning fantastic. It's smoking fantastic. That ash is going on about an inch. Like still fantastic. And you can't be like I said, Macau Twelve. For me, honestly, I will drink that with almost any cigar. I think it pairs well with. Um, it's why it just sits so nicely in my palate. Yeah. What's yours? I'm absolutely loving this pairing. Um, not something that I do as much as I should. Um, I do enjoy a good black coffee or a good rum with a lot of my cigars these days. So while scotch is the classic traditional pairing, I, I myself have found a lot of joy just in a simple cup of coffee and a good cigar. You know, Paul, that just brings up um, something for me. Uh, I, 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 I do smoke a cigar or enjoy a cigar once a day, whether it's the small little cigar rolls or a, uh, a Robusto size, but I really uh, love, you know, the taste of Arnold Palmer with a cigar. I mean, it's so well balanced and to even getting a little bit of that high citrusy taste out of your mouth, right? I mean, a cigar just really takes that away. So you bring up an interesting point there, because not everybody has every time, like especially in the morning, to sit down and smoke a full-size cigar here, you know, a good four or six inch cigar. What are you guys doing in that situation? I mean, for me, I've kind of tried the little cigars. I haven't quite found them as enjoyable. The thing that I've really kind of turned to has been the Arturo Fuente Short Sword. Mm -hmm. I've actually mm -hmm. found that one to be a, a really good, enjoyable smoke for about 45 minutes. So I know it's not, on the, sh it's not the shortest type of cigar, but for me, Instead of, if I don't have time to sit here for an hour and a half, it's been kind of my go-to alternative. How about you guys? Yeah, I mean, I can tell you, so randomly, I'll just get a text from Steve, and it's, uh, hey, cigar break? And you know, I don't always have an hour, right? Like, at the end of the day, think about it in the middle of a work day, I got 10, 20 minutes. 15 like, minutes. I have a lot of things to do throughout the day. We're ultra busy, dealing with clients, dealing internal meetings, all these kind of things going on. Right, but at the end of the day, I do want to take a lunch break. I do want to sit down and be able to, to step outside for a few minutes. And so, at least my go-to for that is this, these little bits of Sinclair. They're spice rum yo know, flavor too. So that's that's on the wrap is a spice rum. So the cigar does not have a spice rum flavor. Right, it's just a good light cigar. It doesn't sit on my tongue or mouth all day long. But then also the back is a little spice rum, like sits on my lips a little bit. So it's a fantastic little smoke. Honestly, it's gone in easy 15 minutes right so it's a it's an easy when i don't have an hour hour and a half to sit down and enjoy a full cigar this is an easy place to go which you'll see me light this up in a little bit when that rocket patel's gone so you like the tip a little bit flavor uh it's i do enjoy it i'm sure you do i have plenty of these <laughs> wow this guy you heard it man you heard it here he ran right into that one <laughs> That's I, will, I will tell you what i do I take the double Coronas, which are slightly thinner, and I would light one of those things up. And I will smoke as much as I can. And of course, um, I do cut where there is, you know, um, that ash, just so I can save that cigar for a later time. Yeah, yep. I, I've definitely done that more than one occasion. But 
Yeah, interesting thing here. So I, I did the normal V cut, and most of the time it's a nice, smooth, even draw. Today it was kind of a tight draw. So what I did is I just take that V cut and I do like an X. It's kind of hard to see, but I just go the opposite side of the oh, yeah. thing. It gives it a nice little X shape, and never have a problem with the draw if I ever have to do that for V cut. Yep. So. Cool. Guys, you ready to talk about your vacations? Sure. Absolutely. Okay, so I already know the outcome. You're gonna have beach, beach, mountains. Hey right, guys, drink up, burn down on the golf course, Aliso Viejo Country Club, hole five, par three, $10,000 for hole one, guys. Paul Horn up. Let's see it. Next up, Chad Narani for $10,000. His butt itches. Yeah. 